Hi, I'm Yossi Rappaport for VIN News, and I have here a guest, a candidate for the 44th Council Manic District for New York City. His name is Yoni Haikin, and uh, he's here to answer a few questions. And uh, welcome, Yoni. Thank you, thank you very much. Great to be together again. Um, so let's get right into it. Sure. Um, before this race, um, this district, um, your father is highly popular over here. But the question now has turned into what is Yoni's experience? Sure. And this has become a central issue in the campaign. Um, of course, we could, we could um, hear that you, were, you grew up in a house and you saw all the action from an int intimate position. But other than that, what um, should, the, should the voters of the district know about you that qualifies you more than the other candidates? Sure. So I, uh, I, it's funny because I know that it was a central part of the campaign in terms of a theme, a question. Um, I don't believe that it is as much today as it was when maybe I still, when I first launched. Um, because I believe that for for some people, the question is not really a question. What I mean by that is only that when some people ask questions, they don't really want to hear the answer. They want to make a point in the question. It's not really a question, it's a statement. And then, and not to sidetrack too much, and I'll get back to the answer, but, and then that's kind of unfortunate because you, it becomes about who's better at a messaging and who wins the message war or the message game more than the content and the truth of the message itself. And so I believe that I've you know, accomplished and have succeeded in showing the community that this is not much of a question any longer, but I will again, of course, answer it now. And we've been very clear from day one that it wasn't just that at all. It's the way I look at it, it's two pieces coming together but it's also fundamentally a question of what does one want in an elected official. You can't answer a question on what experience someone has or what qualifies you until you first define, well, what, do you, what is it that you would want in your elected official first? So I would start there and say, well, first of all, uh, you don't really have much in your elected official if you can't trust or uh, believe that the, that the elected official wear, will be F there for you and will care for you and do things for the community whether or not it's in his interest so that's where tr that is the found in my opinion the foundation of being an elected official moving along to experience is two parts it is the experience of understanding the parts of politics and seeing it from an early child and the effect that that has in terms of thinking about it we are what we experience to a lot of to a to a large degree when you experience your whole life wait my father's dove and he's in the papers and oh there's hillary clinton in my house there's really giuliani in my house there's mayor uh, uh de blasio there's you know there's pataki the motto you know we were talking about a weekly thing almost at, at times i had really giuliani at my bar mitzvah it was my Rebbe. i remember my Rebbe coming to me and it, I didn't think it was, it was, he wasn't trying, he was trying to be sensitive, but it, it hurt me. He says, you know, maybe, uh, you know, po something about politics and saying, you know, it felt like Rudy Giuliani's bar mitzvah, not yours. And going through something like that when you're 13, when you're turning your bar mitzvah, that plays into your psyche. That plays into how you look at things. And what does this mean to me being politics? What do I like about it? What do I not? Because at the same time, I got to see my father. What does it mean when someone comes to my father and expresses love for things that he did? What does well, this many mean? people in, the, in this I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm being about experience, 100%. I'm no, ending I'm, with that. Oh, you're moving on from that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, but it relates to the, the okay, question. Okay, sure, sure. Um, many people um, um, know your father here, um, not so much as a legislator, as a, uh, but uh, as a person who cares mm -hmm. and is more of as as was said about Senator D'Amato, uh -huh. the pothole senator. Mm -hmm. He fixes things. Somebody has a problem with Social Security, it's not his um, thing, but he'll go out of his way, he'll fix it. He'll call the right people, electric bill. So he's, he's a person who, in, in um, the Yiddish language, is called a person who can do toys. He, he can make good to people. Are, are, are we getting um, 
hiking uh, version two, <laughs> uh, doing the same thing, no, I don't, or do you see yeah. yourself as a uh, somebody who has a separate mission? I uh, do. I do really see myself as someone who has a separate mission. And um, I've been very clear to people from day one that um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree in terms of the, what's in the DNA, uh, the cure, that part. Um, but I am uh, very different than my father. And um, it, it, it is very clear. That is very clear to anyone that knows both of us. Um, I've tried to be out there and show myself to people constantly all day and all night and I think everyone now has gone to know me a little bit more um, I think that uh, I am very you know very distinguishable from my father I have my own strengths um, and uh, again I look forward to showing that to the community you know how this version works not hiking version 2 but Yoni hiking okay um, so let's assume that you get elected one of the first votes that you will take will be um, who shall be the, the speaker of the mm -hmm. council because basically it's well known that a councilman uh, doesn't do much uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, <okay>. well <laughs> other than the, I understand. raise your voice when you when need to pick up the telephone call a call an agency or yeah. a department of housing what's doing but when it comes to the real power of deciding budget matters, it's between the mayor and the speaker. And then the votes. And then the votes. Uh, My question yes. would be, um, maybe you, don't, you don't haven't decided who the speaker should be. What are you looking into? Okay. What, what, are you, what would you demand for this community that the, a speaker should, uh, a potential candidate for a speaker should commit himself or herself? Okay, I love that question because number one, not only am I not looking into it, but I'm not even thinking about it. And I make that very clear to elected officials who are now, you know, requesting some time to talk. Um, I am, it is not appropriate. Uh, and this goes back to my point about the foundation of this. Uh, the, 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 as you, as you uh, <laughs> correctly to a large degree stated, the city council member, one of the most important uh, jobs he's going to be doing is the, you know, that first vote. And so that's where that trust comes in, because we all know people who are familiar, and I want to expose politics a bit. I want to tell the people that not only is the politics that we don't like, that we often talk about, I want to tell people and share with people that it's, yes, it's true what you think about the politics, and it's even worse than you think. And I want to, and I want to really build that trust and that engagement with the community. And to answer your question, what am I g demand? Once the, once the, the, the speaker is, 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 is picked and, and chosen, then we go about demanding what's necessary uh, if it's not, let's say, the speaker that you had hoped for. But in terms of evaluating where I would put my vote, that's where that trust comes in, that it's going to be someone who is aligned with as much, more than any other so you, uh, candidate. So you don't have any prior conditions that you will put down uh, to what a speaker must commit himself or oh, herself. Well, f I won't know. I mean, that's that that I, uh, that. I, uh, you, you don't think that the voters should know? I think that what you will demand for. Oh this no, guy. I could say that. No, I, I I was speaking of just whether where where yet where I am in terms of you know uh, thinking about who I would want or what I would demand is after. But in terms of where my vote would be, that's exactly what I was saying. It's the community's needs. It's the alignment with the community. So like the what? demands would be no questionably uh, there needs to be flexibility and I say flexibility because unfortunately um, there isn't enough flexibility in uh, elected officials especially in New York City with how liberal things and progressive and you know when it comes to schools and funding and and programs that are vital to allow the the community to continue to uh, function in the way that we do with our education and the put and the value that we put in our education there needs to be a speaker that gets that and that's number one. Uh, our community is quite unique in so many ways. And, you know, we could, of course, we all know a lot of those things that are unique. But I would say, if you're asking me what would be a demand, what would be, you know, something that I would only be able to even think about voting for someone, is if I think that they get the education piece. No question about that. Oh, speaking about education, sure. um, it has been brought up, but... I your father is known for constituent services, and let's assume 
apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and you're going to be known for that too. So a constituent walks into your office and says, Mr. Heiken, my son is in yeshiva. He's not getting a proper secular education. I've spoken to the Manalam, I've spoken to, uh, to the administration, but to no avail. I think the law requires that they should get a minimum. We can argue what the minimum is, but he's not getting a proper education. What would you advise that mother to do? Well, um, I would uh, say that I would, I would expect that by the time that parent is coming to me to tell me that, that I already have had many conversations with the, the administrators, with the, the appropriate uh, uh, people in the positions of the maestas and yeshivas, that I will uh, know then what more to tell this parent, say, look, we've discussed this, we've been discussing this. Um, the, the point being that it's, it's for me to make sure that the Moises are in a position where, where they are dealing with that as they see fit in the sense of that on their terms because it's either on their terms or it's on outside forces ter terms. And so we will go about. I'm, I'm am not I, going am to... Am I hearing for you like you will advise the Moises no, not advise. to change if, no. to, to, avoid, <laughs> uh, to avoid authorities coming to in? Am I hearing that? Let's clarify. Sorry. What, 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 what? Um, it's like you're going to be in contact with the, with the Moises, with the administrators of the well, school. Sure. Meaning we're going to, if I'm elected, uh, then I will have the opportunity to work with them so that we could together uh, deal with all challenges, certainly something like this. So when the hypothetical question of if a parent comes, what I'm saying is that at that point, I will have had more of those conversations. I've been asking people everything because that's how I believe complicated situations are handled and dealt with by breaking things down to the to the core and by asking every single person who's involved in it a uh, parent feeling you know feels this way um, uh, a head of an institution says well this is the way it is and this is our answer to that okay so let's understand why this person thinks there's a gap here someone's either right but ultimately um, after talking and after understanding and bringing people people together you have to decide where you stand um, well sure um, but uh, it's not for me and she's asking what's the solution well, if she's not satisfied, if the parent is not satisfied with that, then the parent has a choice themselves, of course. Um, the idea is, I don't believe that you get to, oh, after that you have to have... I, my stance is, is exactly what you're saying, well, what are you going to do after that? The stance is the respect for each each cog in this in this situation giving that to the to the leaders of the community to the parents of the community together and you can't you know after that well that's 90 percent of it and you know i know that it sometimes sounds well no that can't no that's what's missing always in out there is that understanding that conversation and so it's, sometimes it's like what no you just conversations Yes, if the world had more conversations, do you know where we'd, be, where we'd be holding in this world if we all try to understand better? So, do I say, do the understanding, and then we get to, well, what will you say? Because you can't say until that understanding happens. So I'm going to focus on that understanding. I'm going to make sure and do everything I can so that in that situation, there is more understanding, not just by me, but between the sides. And I've already asked uh, certain uh, uh, administrators, what do you feel? How do you feel about the fact that I'm telling you, I've been campaigning, parents are coming to me and, and raising this. Are they all wrong? Are they all right? Is it more complicated? And if it is more complicated, why don't they understand that? Are you not communicating it? And if you're not, why aren't you communicating it? Is anyone doing that? Is anyone doing this? So let's do that first, and then we'll all be in better position to go about complicated situations like this. Okay, um, a little bit more um, uh, on, on other issues uh, on, on in the community. One of the um, biggest complaints that you're getting, and all of the I'm getting complaints. Well, no, I have a few uh, complaints. Uh, right, you okay. can expect that. <laughs> okay, I do. <laughs> it's coming. That's all right. If you're going to be elected. <laughs> the question is, uh, there's a lot of complaints about traffic 
noise and, and, and all that tending the, 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 the school buses in the morning together with the garbage. It's a never-ending headache uh, in this neighborhood, and it's projected that the community is growing. So the issue is, if people are complaining about the housing situation over here, and there are young people um, being forced out of, the, of, the, of this neighborhood and the other parts of the district to um, outside suburbs far away from here, um, especially the young ones, my question to you is, do you have a housing solution or approach that will lower the prices? It doesn't have to be that it's going to increase more building. But if it involves increasing the supply of having more housing, changing the zoning, is this area ready for more traffic, for more children in the schools, for more buses, mm -hmm. for more garbage pickup? Or <laughs> well, we're we're having a difficult time uh, maintaining much of that as is. Um, so, uh, is is the community ready? It's not, for, it's, it's not about being ready. I mean, there is two parts to your question. Number one is, you know, all those difficulties and challenges of quality of life in terms of you know garbage, traffic, and all that. And then there's you know the affordable housing and the cost, which of course falls into cost of living and and availability. Uh, and do I have a solution for that? So those are they connect like because most things ultimately connect, but at the same time, there's still two very different issues. Um, so as far as housing, do I have a solution? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, and uh, I'm okay with saying that because I think it goes back to the conversation changing. I think it's time that people stop being misled uh, with ideas and notions that then keeps everything as in, oh, there's a solution and, okay, nothing's happening and uh, we just complain about it. We need to uh, focus on, a little bit like you alluded to, where we could, at times you alluded to it, uh, make improvements, keep our ears to the grindstone, uh, make sure that we are following every, you know, things go on all the time in terms of uh, in real estate and development. You know, if someone, let's say, decides they want to do that for a living, you know, how do you start? Well, keep your, you know, do me a favor, you know, the big deals, I know you're going to, but, you know, maybe you hear something that I could be involved in. That's networking, right? The, so you have to make sure that the community understands where there's room for improvement, where things there's an opportunity for zoning and rezoning, and right away jumping on using the incentives that are in place, figuring out and making sure that everyone who is associated with this and who could be in position to so make it. Uh, running around uh, and campaigning in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, People like the honesty. Yeah, well, that's good. People are reacting Hopefully. very positive <laughs> to the honesty. So what will your impression be that people would rather have a change of zoning to increase housing in exchange for more parks or in exchange um, in, in, for affordable housing? And if it's affordable housing, does the affordable housing have to be here or can they build here and have affordable housing in the well, I mean, the city is uh, for whatever you're going to say in terms of you know how successful they've been. You know, uh, the mayor's uh, pretty ambitious plans in terms of affordable housing units. Again, without evaluating, you know, okay, he gets an A, he gets a B. Uh, it's great anytime a family gets to move in somewhere. We all agree to that. Uh, the problem for us is that it doesn't help us much if it's in other areas. I mean, uh, we every community takes care of their own. Uh, we have to always show that we care about others, of course. But at the end of the day, Borough Park, Midwood, you know, Borough Park specifically with the overcrowded situation as is, you know, affordable housing in the Bronx and does not help us. So certainly. Uh, that's not good enough. We can't act, so we cannot accept that. But it, but if there is but the answer to your question is if there is a choice, of course, the, if there is a choice between a fa one family having a place to live, and um, you know, a hundred children being you know, or five hundred children, whatever it might be, or uh, everyone, I would I personally would not be comfortable knowing that uh, uh, a, a zoning change would would allow for a park rather than uh, the chance to accommodate another family or two families or five families. So oh. that's the answer. To and that. the effect on the traffic is not. Well, accurate. the effect on traffic, uh, it, you know, in terms of and garbage collection again, and so sewers we've, and we've we've we've, um, we've we've I'm proud to say that in. In uh, two and a half months, we've uh, we've managed to already 
uh, lay out many ideas to help all the quality of life issues, not all of them, of course, but many of the quality of life issues that you're talking about, trash, traffic, uh, not just alternate side, that gets all the attention. You know, I feel like it's the big brother of the smart, it's the, it's the, you know, the smart city initiative that we encourage people uh, to check out at yonihiking.com. There's like, we have up to now five to seven, six maybe ideas, something like that, on, on, on things that are, that are all connected to one thing, Giving New Yorkers, giving our pe giving the, the citizens of our, of our district, of New Yorkers in general, New York City uh, citizens in general, what uh, qu things that quality of life things that that are already being used and done in other cities across America. So, are we ready for it? Is that okay at the cost of it? If we continue to make improvements and if we use technology and uh, and and ideas and we continue being creative and we use things that are being done that clearly helps, why not? Talking about creative. Yes. One of the creative ideas of my son, and he keeps on saying that. Of your what? That is proposed by some. Oh uh, yes. In, in city planning, is uh, congestion pricing. Now, congestion pricing, just for those who are watching. Sure. Um, involves of um, incentivizing um, people to stay away from yes. the bridges going into the city. Right. But that will ease traffic between Borough Park and Williamsburg, Borough mm -hmm. Park and Staten Island. <laughs> it will lower the price of the Verrazano Bridge. Uh, our community, if you're close to the community, is interconnected mm -hmm. with Lakewood, but upstate New York, with New Jersey and the suburbs. Uh, there's a lot of travel for a lot of symptoms. Uh, wouldn't congestion, congestion pricing um, be a much better solution for travel between the Orthodox communities? Have you given some thought? I, I have, and you know, I think uh, I think that part of the responsibility in, in being an elected official is, you know, having a, a kind of a pyramid of, of priority. Um, you know, you can't satisfy every need all the time, and you sometimes have to make choices. And so, I have given that thought in many, in relation to many things. And ultimately, at the end of the day, our comfort sometimes needs to be, in, in some ways, un, you know, yeah, it feels like it's being undermined and, and maybe lowered for something bigger than that. And that is, uh, in my opinion, the need to not uh, make. Uh, life more difficult in terms of cost of living for families and middle-aged people that uh, that will end up being uh, you know having a harder time uh, with their bills because of the cost am of I, getting around. So the answer is the answer is exactly that? yes. That's the answer. The okay. I, I like to explain where I'm coming from as well. Okay, um, so, uh, so you know that's you why. I, yes, absolutely. Um, um, alcohol tax. Oh well, well I'm, like, uh, I, I'm against all taxes, but that one for sure. Well, first of all, in our community, I think. Well, no, I mean, let me be clear. Uh, alcohol tax, um, you know, in yeah, case you don't know, wine. right? That's that, that. That that's exactly what I was going to say. That I I was thinking of what are you going to do on Shabbos uh, for Kiddush? You know, of course, you you know, grape juice. But at the end of the day, uh, every you know Shabbos, you know, Yom Tovim. Uh, that again, I I've Makes been clear, uh, Yom Tovim, right? So uh, that that's a going to be a lot of taxes, extra taxes on Pesach. Um, I've been very clear in general that I just believe that it is enough of raising taxes on anything. Um, it's just, it's, it's out of hand. And so... Um, but it has been shown that the alcohol taxes on beer and, and, uh, and hard liquor well, I can tell you, does curb the teenage uh, <laughs> problems. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, again, uh, there's always two sides to, to it, almost, uh, often almost anything. But... As someone who has worked uh, with teens at risk, though I, by the way, don't like that term, um, but as someone who has worked with uh, many people who are suffering from addiction, who have substance abuse issues and alcohol issues, uh, I know a thing or two about this. And um, I still, someone who, as myself, I've buried bodies um, as well. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, overdoses in the community. Um, I've had clients or people that I was close to, cared for, loved, who have been going through difficulties from alcohol and, and, and drugs, and I have been at their funerals, young people. So this is, there's nothing closer to my heart than this. Um, at the same time, I don't believe uh, that 
taxing alcohol because these people uh, who I'm referring to, yeah, you know, again, this is a longer conversation. Um, well, they start with that beer, but it's the, the taxing of it is not whatever help you, you could suggest that it would, you know, it would, it, would, uh, it would lead to in terms of, you know, young people not drinking. Uh, no, I don't think that that's, that's, that's the answer, and I don't think that that's uh, uh, the solution, so I'm against it. And I just don't think it would be fair, especially, again, in our community. It would just be, can you imagine every Shabbos and every Yom Tov, you know, having to pay that much more for all the, uh, for all, you know, wine, and, and it's for just... sacramental you know, and, and Kiddush, exactly, of course, of course, obviously. Uh, so one final question. This, um, this race has seen a lot of negativity, um, and... Uh, it, it bothers a lot of people. Uh, myself included, by the way. Well, uh, some, but some, most yes. people say that it, it's mm. coming from both sides. No, I don't think most people. I mean, with all, uh, t- I will agree to disagree. If that's if that's what you have sensed, then that's that's really but tragic I, to me. Is it, that's the sense of uh, many people I talk to, but it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah, true. look, I, I I tell you that ultimately it's about believing in the person. If if people believe that I'm lying. It makes me sad, and but I have to accept it. I can't control what I can't control. I am the, I am like allergic to negativity, <laughs> and for people out there, just ask people who know me. They will say pretty quickly what I'm all about, and I don't. I don't do negative, uh, not in campaigns. I daven, honestly. Over the years, there's been you know, specifically in relation to my father, you know, some people I don't like him. They maybe want to hurt him. And I know often who they are. And I, when I was younger, I had some in my heart. Real strong, I don't like to use the, the H word, the, the hate word. I don't like to use that word. But I can't deny that there was parts of my heart that had feelings like that. And I davened that I shouldn't have that. I only davened that those people should not be in position to hurt other people anymore. So I work really hard on not having any of that. And, um, it really makes me sad that that so the community we, still the community our... might still might might still some might be falling that yes yeah, so all negative on this side negative on that side moral equivalency is my pet peeve I, I, it, it, and that's what happens with disinformation okay can we expect uh, at least from the, from the part of the hiking campaign well it's well, pulling off the dog well I no never board. I don't have I, I can't control when you are doing well I'm Lee I know we're doing well in a, in a race you have hopefully thousands of supporters some very passionate um, the act people need to understand that there is a huge difference well two things number one there's a huge difference between personal and um, and t- attacking someone's position and s- calling them out on their mistruths. That's not personal and that's not nasty. That's number one. Number two is that you, 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 people need to know that there is a huge difference between paid for by a campaign and people in WhatsApp that support you coming up with a funny cartoon. That is very different and I d- don't support any of it, but okay. I have nothing to do with that. Thank you. Nice Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you.